is a new Dying Light game on the way. <coughs> Unlike an anime dad, I'm back with the milk and a Dying Light update. Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and we're going to discuss everything we know about Dying Light the Beast and what it means for the future of Dying Light. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! If you push too much, you might unleash the beast. Dying Light 2 finds itself in a unique position. Techland remains committed to supporting the game through their 5-year plan, offering content drops and events. However, there will be no major story DLCs. Rather than releasing a second DLC, Techland chose to channel the community's feedback into creating a standalone game, Dying Light the Beast. As Timon explained, his ideas for the DLC grew so expansive that it evolved into a fully-fledged standalone alone game. This new title will follow a linear story format, Reminiscent of Dying Light 1, without the choices or consequences system. While branching narratives are intriguing, I am personally drawn to the straightforward, immersive storytelling that a linear format provides. But what exactly is Dying Light the Beast about? This game takes place after the events of Dying Light 2 and thrusts us back into the shoes of Kyle Crane. After being held captive and experienced experimented on for over a decade, Crane finally breaks free and embarks on a mission of revenge. One of his primary targets is a figure known as the Baron, believed to be one of his captors he will hunt down. As Timon Smectala described, Dying Light the Beast is a revenge story for Kyle Crane, akin to the premise of Old Boy, but set in a world overrun by zombies. Unlike Aiden Caldwell, Kyle Crane can fully harness his zombie powers at will, which gives gives the game a distinct beast versus survivor vibe as hinted in the trailer. The game introduces a new zombie mode skill tree, allowing players to enhance Crane's beast-like abilities. Activating beast mode freely lets Crane unleash devastating moves, such as a ground pound that damages nearby enemies or hurling stone blocks at them like the Hulk. He's also more agile, capable of jumping higher and running faster. Survival is the game's central focus. While guns are present, ammo will be far scarcer than in Dying Light 2. As a wise pilgrim once said, sometimes you've got to become a monster to stay human. Both of our Dying Light protagonists embody this notion. Personally, I'm thrilled to see Crane fully embrace his infected state and wield his newfound abilities. One of the most memorable moments in Dying Light for me was when Crane fought the mother in beast mode. This new game promises to expand on that experience making it an exciting evolution for his character. Freaks of nature zombies are set to make a comeback in Dying Light the Beast, but where does this story fit into the timeline? The events unfold 20 years after Dying Light 1 and takes place outside of Villador. I'm excited to see our boy Crane return after a decade-long retirement. Dying Light the Beast is designed to bridge the gap between the first and second games, addressing lingering questions about the canonical endings of both installments. Originally, the second DLC for Dying Light 2 was supposed to feature Kyle Crane as an unplayable character, with players controlling Aiden instead. Given that the DLC 2 was set to involve both protagonists, we might see Aiden make an appearance in Dying Light the Beast as well. Perhaps Techland's plans did not involve reviving the Dying Light franchise with their favorite poster child. Where does the game take place? Dying Light the Beast is set in an open world region called Castor Woods, which includes a densely packed town, villages with plenty of parkour opportunities, an industrial area with a rail yard, a creepy woodland environment, industrial complexes, and an old town nestled in the countryside. Techland has also made significant improvements to the weather system, introducing dynamic weather like rain and storms that affect the mood and visuals. They've also reworked the game's audio to enhance immersion. However, how will we traverse these environments? Vehicles are making a return in Dying Light the Beast, similar to the following DLC. Driving in this game is fraught with danger, fuel is scarce, cars are vulnerable to attacks, and they can break down in the worst possible places. It might not be the safest option to drive, unless Crane has a death wish, right? Nah. Full speed ahead! 
I'm also hoping the in-depth vehicle upgrade system from the following makes a comeback in this new game, as Crane will have access to a drivable truck that can seat four players. After all, why face a horde of virals alone when you and your friends can sacrifice each other for the greater of humanity? Can you not? Oh my God. Although, one thing I'm curious about is the decision to implement third-person driving in Dying Light the Beast. Given that Dying Light is known for its first-person perspective, it would be great if Techland offered an option to switch off the third-person view, allowing us to fully immerse ourselves in the game's world. So how long does Dying Light the Beast take to complete? The game offers over 18 hours of playtime, featuring a full-length campaign, side quests, and a variety of open world activities. The main story alone takes about 10 hours to complete, with roughly 8 hours needed to tackle the side content. It seems Techland is deliberately distancing this project from the second game, making the standalone experience more reminiscent of the first Dying Light. Given their evident passion for this new project, I see this as a promising sign for the franchise's future. This could very well be the Dying Light game we've been waiting for. In a move, sure, to please fans, Techland also brought back Kyle Crane's original voice actor, Roger Craig Smith, to once again voice our beloved protagonist. As for accessibility, will Dying Light the Beast be free to play? Players who own the Dying Light 2 Collector's Edition or Ultimate Edition will get access to Dying Light the Beast at no additional cost. The game will be available on Xbox Series X, PS5, PS4, Xbox One, and other platforms. With Dying Light the Beast on the horizon, it raises questions about the future of Dying Light 2. While there won't be any new story DLC for the game, it's clear that Dying Light 2 won't be completely forgotten. However, it seems Techland is gradually shifting focus away from this installment. Despite this, some new features are still slated for Dying Light 2. These include the ability to hire a companion akin to what we saw in Far Cry 5 and a potential feature allowing players as Aiden to check their biomarker when the HUD is turned off. We can also look forward to a full version of the Tower Raid, wandering traders offering unique items, and possibly the option to mark unused weapons for trash. Additionally, there were possibilities of combat-wise charged kicks, and a UV weapon mod that lets weapons emit a UV light. Some creators also speculate that we might see a return of the Be the Zombie mode, or a new PvP mode in Dying Light 2. On top of that, Timon has hinted at exciting developments for Dying Light 3. After a dark period of continuous updates, it's refreshing to see the promise of substantial new content on the horizon. What are your thoughts? Thoughts on Dying Light the Beast? What are you hoping to see in that game? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As someone who loved the Dying Light franchise for a while, I'm quite excited about this game. I feel like a lot of what we wanted in the Dying Light games were put into Dying Light the Beast. I'll definitely be trying this game myself when it's out. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Dying Light content from your favorite zombie hunter. Thank you for watching and and that's all. Good night and good luck. <laughs>